everyone, and welcome to the Stock Swiss Show Play of the Day, which is AEO. Only play I did today. Uh, took a long, long, long time to go, it seems, but it worked. And another test of conviction between yesterday and today, really seeing the level of advancement, even for myself, with my own personal level of conviction, because I'm doing trades and I'm calling trades and I'm sticking with them, even against the market, even when they're taking a while to go. And... Uh, They've both paid off between staples and this. It's just been a really nice week. And I could not have been more exact on the target with this. I don't, I don't remember where I found it, but, you know, I do all my work in the morning. When I get up in the morning, I'm a morning person, and I think very clearly, looking at the stocks, deciding what I want to trade, getting the numbers written down. The target on this today was $10.50. The low of the stock today was $10.50. And yeah, this could have gone to $10, but by the time it started breaking, I said, no, it's not going to make it there today. I said $10.50, and boy, was I right. I mean, this was exact, 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 exact. So let's look at it. Nice way to go into holiday weekend. I am taking the next few days off, and really nice way to go into the holiday weekend. Super duper duper. All right, let's go back to it here. So, this actually I don't think was the open. It was one little bar that didn't really move without a lot of volume, and sometimes these stocks in this exchange open late. I think this was the open. Weird, but happens sometimes, and I'm getting more used to that. Anyways, this is a big bar if you look at it, if you just look at the bar. But then when you look at the numbers, it's really not that bad. And I have a rule, I have something that I teach in the class, it's called a reverse swoosh. This was not a reverse swoosh, it wasn't, because even though the bars seem aggressive, if you look at the numbers, they're not, and interestingly enough, this went to the maximum, maximum level of resistance. If it had gone one penny more, I wouldn't have done it, but it didn't. <laughs> so I did it, and I did it here. I mean, this was like a perfect entry, I mean, seriously, seriously, seriously and came all the way down and broke really hard. And it's hard to see right now because this is actually not moving in live time. It's actually stationary. But in the trading room, when I was watching it, calling it, and seeing it set up, this happened slower than this happened. This happened aggressively and fast. It was a good sign. And so what happened was selling came into the stock at this number. Selling came in and pushed it down into the resistance that made the stock go down. And the powers that be that are controlling the stock decided that the stock was not going to go above this level today. And that's what happened. It got sold off. It was a really nice trade, except for the fact that it took a long time to go, which is unusual for most of the trades that I do, which is funny about this week. Anyway, some people in the room killed it because they lost conviction because it took so long to go. And then it did this green bar here. I stayed with the trade. Stay with the trade. Stay with the trade. Stay with the trade. I even lowered my stock. Not at break even, but I gave it a little bit of a cushion over here. And the funny thing was, when I saw the 15 minute, when it was rallying back, and this is all happening, the market's rallying too. I still didn't lose conviction in this. This is actually their 15 minute buy setup, but I knew it was still okay. Really got to give myself a round of applause here for the trades that I've called lately. I mean, the gaps have been good. The gaps have been solid this week, but the entries have been tough. Tough to find, tough to spot, tough to do, tough to hold, tough to stay with to really get paid. Because if you did the trade that I did today and stayed with this to the target, you really got paid. It was a nice, nice day. Similar thing yesterday with the staples. One of the key things, and I'm going to talk about this in the next webinar that I do, one of the key ingredients to making a lot of money as a professional day trader in the market is, or just as a day trader in the market, if you're going to do it for part-time or full-time, no matter what kind of income you're looking to get out of this. If you want to make a lot of money, whether you're doing it as a secondary source of income or a full-time source of income or retirement, if you want to make serious money, and I mean several thousand dollars a week, $10,000 a month, $20,000 a month, I mean serious money that could equate to a regular job, you have to have one thing that you do extremely well and you have to be very good at it. And you have to do that one thing with size and conviction and you also have to hold it to the target. Now, that doesn't mean the whole position to the target some days. 
it means a chunk of the position to target. Although some days you will hold the whole thing to target, which is actually what I did with this today. Held the whole thing to the target. And I was already up in it. When you're up in a trade from the time that you take it, it's not hard to hold it. Many people take trades at bad entries, at bad places, and don't know what they're doing. And also, they lack conviction. They lack total conviction in the directional bias of what the stock's supposed to be doing on the day of the gap. They buy it, they short it, they do a million things, and they lose conviction. They don't hold it, and therefore, they don't make any money in the full-on move. I mean, I'm getting the full-on move as much as I can in these things, 80% at least, most of the days. And like days like today, you get the whole thing. So, you know, every once in a while, you will hold the whole trade to the whole amount. And that takes conviction. How can you do that? You have to understand the basis for your strategy and really have a skill that you mastered, which I do, which is gaps. There's trading rooms didn't short this stock today. I mean, that's one of the amazing things when I look at this. And I talked about this in the room. I, and that's probably why it took a while to break. And I tell everybody, stay with it. Traders aren't going to be looking to short this today. Most traders aren't going to play this today. And if they are, they're going to try to buy it, not short it. I probably was the only trading room out there that actually called to short this today. It, it was a great Great, great call. So what happens is a lot of people see a bars like this in the beginning part of the day, see a stock gapping down as well, the way this was in daily chart, and I'll go back in a minute, and they'll make an attempt here to buy this. And maybe put the stop under the low. And if you did that, you actually, with the cushion, you stayed in it. And some people then, when it retests the low, will buy it here. You can see that this got some sort of lift off of here, buying into this bar, but it wasn't institutional buying. That's the difference. It's so important to read what is institutional buying and what is buying by some traders, a couple of people. Because as you see, the institutions were controlling this. It never got over the high of the day and actually held the stock where we lowered it. In fact, I talked about this before I closed out the room, which was actually before the stock broke, although I gave everybody the numbers. I said, this stock will not go over the high of the day today, 100% conviction. It will not go over the high of the day. And if you want to keep the stop, just keep the stop over the high of the day. You'll stay in it all day. It will not go over the high of the day. I knew it wouldn't, and it didn't. And it actually went red, and it closed red. And this is lower tomorrow. Absolutely. And really nice follow through on this today. And you didn't have to stay in it like a thousand bazillion, bazillion hours. I mean, sometimes you do a stock and it goes so quickly in the morning and like by 10 o'clock you have like 80% of the move. But every once in a while, you do have to stay in the thing. But if you're up, like by the time this happened here around 1130, like you're like, yes. I mean, you knew it was going and going to break. And it's just a matter of then where you're going to get out of it and how you're going to hold to. I think this could have gone to 10 today, but it was just by the time I broke, it was late. And, and it went to the exact number that I said, which is really hilarious. Anyways, let's look at the daily chart. A lot of traders didn't do this today. They didn't, and if they did, they bought it. They bought it. What a terrible buy to buy this today. People bought it, put the stop on the low of the day, and they got stopped out. That's what helped push this move down here. You can see it. Actually, you can see it. The selling comes in here. Selling came in here. Selling came in here. Here's where the long the people that are traders that are long are getting stopped out. That's what makes this big red bar then push down even more. And of course, the selling continues that's being sold in the trend of the stock for the institutions that are pushing it down on the day. The trend of the stock on the day is bearish. It is a bearish gap. There's no reason to buy something that is bearish on the day. This is a bearish day. This is not a bullish day. You don't buy something that is bearish. You want to buy things that are strong on the day. This was weak on the day. Okay. Now, that's not to say that every gap down works. Not every gap down works. But again, this goes back to the same thing. You have to have a way to qualify the gap. If you find a way to qualify the gap, you'll know if the gap down is going to continue lower from where it opens, or you'll know if the gap up is going to continue higher from where it opens to buy it. You, you cannot buy every up gap, and you cannot short every, every single down gap. But I have a way to qualify that, the 26-point rating system. So I knew that this stock, the directional bias for the day, for today, because I'm playing it today. I, I need to be in the right direction today, May 21st, if I'm playing it. Okay, so regardless of what's going on in the whole totality of the bigger picture here, I must be in the right direction today or I won't make money. So I have to read that correctly. And how do I do that? I'm rating the gap. And the gap told me the stock would sell off on the day, on the live day today, the 21st, because that's all I really care about, okay? I don't care what this does tomorrow, the next day, the next day. I care what it does today, the day I want to short it, the day that it gaps. And so what happened here was a lot of people tried to buy this, 
And I know where people are coming from when they look at buying this. It's so great to understand what other people are doing that are trainers because I know they're going to get taken out by the institutions. And my, my rating system really reads institutional patterning. It reads institutional setups, whether or not they're going to sell something on the day or buy something on the day, whether the gap, the gap is down or up or whatever. And when a gap gaps down and doesn't rate well, I know that one of two things is going to happen. If it doesn't rate well, I know that either A, institutions are not going to sell it, therefore it's not going to go lower, or B, institutions are going to buy it, in which case it's going, to, it's going to go higher, not lower, in which case I don't want to do it, or C, the best case scenario, which is what I'm looking for every day when I rate a gap with a 26-point rating system, I'm looking for 20 points or more, to determine if the gap is going to get sold off on that day, because that's the day that I want to make money in the stock, the day that I short it, the day that I'm looking at the gap. So great call by me today. Great, fantastic way to go into the holiday weekend. Great call by the Stocks with Show live trading room today. Great call by me, Melissa Armo. And if anyone is interested in the next Golden Gap class, it is June 7th and 8th. Let me just make sure that date, June 7th and 8th. I'm running a special for Fleet Week, for the holiday week, for the holiday weekend. If anyone wants to sign up for the class for June, you have until Memorial Day, May 26. If you sign up for the June GLAP class by then, you can get two months free in the live trading room, which is a fantastic deal because you can get all my calls and calls like this in Staples yesterday. It's June 7th and 8th is the next class. So if you want to sign up and pay and register by May 22nd, May 26, I'm sorry, Memorial Day, it's Monday, for the next Golden Gap class, you will get two free months of the live trading room, which is a fantastic deal. And it's an early bird special. I did it last month. I'm doing it again this month. It was a good idea. I don't think I'm going to do it again for a while. So if you want to do it, now's the time. And the cost of the class will be increasing as of July 1st. And I'll be sending out emails about that uh, starting next week for everyone that's interested. So people that want to do the class, uh, June is the month to do it. It should be a busy, busy month for trading. There's a lot of things going on. Market has really been slow the last couple of days of movement because of the holiday week. Uh, but once back from the holiday after Memorial Day next week, things should pick up again. And was really happy to get some nice gaps this week and a, and a slow holiday week. So very happy. If anyone wants to email me, you can email me at melissa at thestockswish.com. Have a fantastic holiday weekend, everybody. Have a great Memorial Day. Have a great Fleet Week. Enjoy yourselves. Email me if you're interested in the Golden Gap class. Lots more to come. A lot of exciting things happening this summer. Website rolling out. Some other new things. A video library. Video membership. Lots of exciting things going on this summer for the Stock Swish. Going to be the summer of the Stock Swish. Have a great night, everybody, and I'll see you next week.